Kali. I have done my B.Tech in IIT Madras from 2014 to 2018 in Metallurgy and Materials Engineering. I am working as a software developer since two years in the B2C healthcare sector. I will be teaching you 3D geometry of NCRT 12th standard textbook. Let's begin with the topic 3D geometry. In class 11, the 2D geometry was covered and a brief intro of 3D geometry was given. In this lecture, we'll look into all the concepts of 3D geometry which are given in the NCRT textbook of 12th standard. I hope you'll learn from this tutorial. So let's begin. What is 3D geometry question? I'll explain you this with the help of 2D geometry. So in 2D geometry, we deal with two coordinate system. And based upon these two coordinates, we solve point and line rated question. So in similar way, in 3D, we deal with three coordinate systems X, Y and Z. Here Z is extra as compared to 2D. So based upon these three coordinate system, we solve point, line and plane rated question. In this diagram, we can see there are three axes X, Y and Z. And point P, location of point P in this space is given by X, Y and Z with respect to the axis given. So 3D geometry refers to the mathematics of shapes in three-dimensional space and consists of three coordinates. These three coordinates are X, Y and Z. Further in this video, I will first go through basic concepts, then concepts of line and finally concepts of planes in 3D. Let's start with basic concepts. In basic concepts, we will first uh, read about distance formula, then section formula, then direction ratios of line projection of a line segment angle between two lines distance between two points and 3d let's assume we have two points uh, point p and point q with coordinates x1 y1 z1 and x2 y2 z2 respectively then distance between those two points in 3d will be under square under square of x2 minus x1 ka whole square plus y2 minus y1 ka whole square plus z2 minus z1 ka whole square this is an easy formula which we got using Pythagoras theorem. Next is section formula. This gives us the information of two sections of a line segment which was divided by a point internally or externally. Let us consider two points A and B with coordinates x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2 respectively. Consider point P1 dividing AB into the ratio M ratio N as shown in the figure given below. From the equation of line, we can say that the coordinate x will be equal to mx2 plus nx1 divided by m plus 1 and y equals to my2 plus ny1 plus m plus y. If p cuts the line segment internally in m ratio n, then the coordinates of x will be mx, mx2 plus nx1 divided by m plus 1 y coordinate will be m y 2 plus n y 1 divided by m plus 1 m plus n and z coordinate will be m z 2 plus n z 1 divided by m plus n. If p cuts the line segment externally in m ratio n then the coordinates of x will be m x 2 minus m x 1 divided by m plus 1 m plus n and y coordinate will be m, m y 2 minus n y 1 divided by m plus n and z coordinate will be m z 2 minus n z 1 divided by m plus n. Note, remember the change of sign in these two formulas. Next subtopic is direction of cosine of a line. In this diagram, we can see the line PO makes angle alpha with x axis, beta with y axis and gamma with z axis. The direction of line OP is determined by angle alpha, beta and gamma with OX, OY and OZ respectively. The angles are called direction angles and their cosines are called direction cosines. The cosines of direction angles are given by cos alpha, cos beta and cos gamma and these are denoted by L, M and N respectively. You, you will see L, M and N more frequently than cos alpha, cos beta and cos gamma as cosines of direction. Second point is really important. Uh, this gets uh, most of the question will get solved by this trick. Sum of squares of direction cosines of a line is always 1. That is L square plus N square plus N square is equal to 1. Hence cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is also 1. Next topic is direction ratios of a line. Any number proportional to the direction cosine 
is known as direction ratio of a line. These direction numbers are represented by A, B and C. The ratio between direction cosine and direction ratio of a line is constant. Here we can see uh, it's given by L by A is equal to M by B is equal to N by C is equal to K. Here L, M and N are direction cosines which are cos alpha, cos beta and cos gamma respectively. Uh, we know that L square plus M square plus N square is 1. Hence from above two equations we can derive that direction cosines are plus minus a upon under root of a square plus b square plus c square comma plus minus b upon under root of a square plus b square plus c square plus minus c under root of c divided by under root of a square plus b square plus c square. Next topic is projection of a line. In this diagram we can see line a b sorry line segment. Uh, its projection on line p q is a b cos theta where theta is angle between a b and line PQ. As we know that cos theta is cosine angles which can be represented by L hence projection of a line segment AB with A x1 y1 z1 and B x2 y2 z2 having direction cosines are L M and N respectively is given by x2 minus x1 n to L plus y2 minus y1 into M plus z2 minus z1 into N. Now this is a really important topic angle between two lines. As you can see in this diagram there are two lines passing from origin O and having theta angle in between. Let's assume theta is an acute angle between lines OP and OQ with direction cosines L1, M1, N1 and L2, M2, N2 respectively. Then cos theta will be equal to L1 into L2 plus M1 into L2 plus N1 into N2 and we know that sin theta will be equal to under root of 1 minus cos square theta. If we solve that equation, we will arrive that cos sin theta is equal to plus minus under root of n1 m1 minus n2 minus uh, m2 into n1 whole square plus n1 l2 minus n2 l1 whole square plus l1 m2 minus l2 m1 whole square. There are two conditions. If lines are parallel, like l1 and l2 are parallel to each other, then L1 upon L2 will be equal to M1 upon M2 will be equal to L1 upon M2. And in second condition, if lines are perpendicular, L2 and L1 are perpendicular, then uh, the equation with their direction cosines will be L1 into L2 plus M1 into N2 plus N1 into N2 will be equal to 0. Here ends the basic concepts of 3D. Now let's move to the concepts of line in 3D. Let's start with the concepts of line. Uh, in this uh, topic, we'll, um, uh, we'll see the angle between two lines, vector equations of line, Cartesian equations of line, vector equation of line, angle between two lines, shortest distance between the lines. The uh, uh, As you might have noticed, I mentioned uh, vector equations of two lines. So in this, uh, actually I wanted to mention that one is in Cartesian form and one is in vector form. Yeah, for parallel lines and skew lines. Starts with angle between two lines. Previously we saw angle between two lines uh, in the formula of directional cosines. But in here, we will see angle between two lines in the formula of directional ratios. So I have kept the diagram same where there are two lines which are passing from the origin and having angle theta in between. Let L1 and L2 represent two lines having the directional ratio as A1, B1, C1 and A2, B2, C2 respectively. And they are also passing through origin. Let us choose a random point on a line L1 as A and on a line L2 as B. Considering the directed lines QA, OA and OB as shown in the figure given below then the angle between these lines will be theta and the, in the form of directional ratios will be cos theta is equal to mod of a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 divided by under root of a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square into under root of a2 square plus b2 square plus c2 square and we can derive sin theta also as we know sin theta is equal to under root of 1 minus cos square theta. In this also, there are two cases. 
वन इज वन एल वन एंड एल टू विद डायरेक्शन रेशियो एन ए वन बी वन सी वन एन ए टू बी टू सी टू रिस्पेक्टिवली और पर्पेंडिकुलर टू इच अदर दैट इज थीटा इज इक्वल टू नाइन्टी डिग्री देन ए वन ए टू प्लस बी वन बी टू प्लस सी वन सी टू विल बी इक्वल टू जीरो एंड इन नेक्स्ट केस वेन एल टू एंड एल वन आर पैरल टू इच अदर इट मीन्स थीटा इन बिटवीन दैम आर जीरो देर फोर ए वन अपॉन ए टू इज इक्वल टू बी वन अपॉन बी टू इज इक्वल टू सी वन अपॉन सी टू नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज इक्वेशन ऑफ अ लाइन इन दिस टॉपिक विल सी इक्वेशन ऑफ अ लाइन इन वैक्टर एज वेल एज इन कार्टिशियन फॉर्म वैक्टर इक्वेशन ऑफ अ लाइन पासिंग थ्रू अ पॉइंट विथ पोजिशन वैक्टर वैक्टर ए अलॉन्ग विथ डायरेक्शन वैक्टर बी इज वैक्टर आर इज इक्वल टू वैक्टर ए प्लस लेफ्टा वैक्टर बी हेयर लेफ्टा इज अ स्केलर दैट इज कॉन्स्टेंट इन दिस अनदर वैक्टर इक्वेशन अ वैक्टर इक्वेशन ऑफ अ लाइन पासिंग थ्रू टू पॉइंट्स इन प्रीवियस देर वॉज ओनली वन पॉइंट इन द वैक्टर डायरेक्शन हेयर देर आर टू पॉइंट्स विथ वैक्टर पोजिशन टू पॉइंट्स विथ पोजिशन वैक्टर ए एंड बी इज आर वैक्टर इज इक्वल टू ए वैक्टर प्लस लेमडा बी वैक्टर माइनस ए वैक्टर हेयर लेमडा इज स्केलर अगेन नाउ द कार्टिशियन इक्वेशन ऑफ अ लाइन पासिंग थ्रू अ पॉइंट x1 y1 z1 and a di- uh, which is having the direction ratio of a b and c is given by x minus y1 upon a is equal to y minus y1 upon b is equal to z minus z1 upon c now equation of a line passing through two points similar like vector equation it will be x minus x1 upon x2 minus x1 is equal to y minus y1 upon y2 minus y1 is equal to z minus z1 Right by z two minus z one. Next is angle between two lines. Angle between two lines. Angle between two lines. When the vector equation of two lines are given. Okay. So let's say there are two lines. One is vector a plus lambda vector b, and the second line is uh, vector a two plus mu lambda mu vector b two. Then the angle between them cos theta is equal to mod of uh, dot product of b one. वेक्टर डॉट वेक्टर प्रोडक्ट ऑफ बी वन बी टू डिवाइडेड बाई मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ बी वन इन टू बी टू हेयर ऑल्सो देर आर टू केसेस इफ टू लाइन्स आर पपैंडिकुलर दैट इज थीटा इज इक्वल टू नाइंटी दैन डॉट प्रोडक्ट ऑफ वैक्टर बी वन एंड बी टू विल बी जीरो एंड इफ द थीटा इज जीरो दैट इज द लाइन्स आर पैलर दैन द क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ वैक्टर ए वन एंड ए टू Vector b1 and b2 is equal to zero. Now, uh, apparently that was the wrong equation given. Now I have corrected the equation. Uh, if the lines are parallel, that is theta in between them is zero, then the cross product of vector b1 and b2 will be zero. This is the correct equation. In similar way, angle between two lines in Cartesian form will be if theta is the angle between the lines. Uh, the equation of lines are. x minus x1 divided by a1 is equal to y minus y1 divided by b1 is equal to z minus z1 divided by c1 and x minus x2 divided by a2 is equal to y minus y2 divided by b2 is equal to z minus z2 divided by c2. Then the angle between them will be given by modulus of a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 divided by under square under root of a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square into under root of a2 square plus b2 square plus c2 square if you notice this formula is quite similar to two vector form of cos theta in this there is a cos theta is equal to dot product of vector b1 and b2 divided by product of magnitude of b1 and b2 there are also two cases if theta is equal to 90 that means angle between them Is ninety and they are perpendicular. It means like they are, the lines are perpendicular. Then the product of a one plus a two plus b one plus b two plus c one plus c two is equal to zero. It is similar to dot product of magnitude b one dot product of vector b one and b. In this case also there are two cases. So first is if angle between two lines are two lines is ninety degree. That is the lines are perpendicular. Then a one into a two plus b one into b two is equal plus c one into c two is equal to zero. And the second case will be if theta is equal to zero, that is the lines are parallel, then a one upon a two is equal to b one upon b two is equal to c one upon c two. Next topic is shortest distance between two lines. In this also there are two cases. First is the two lines l one 
and L2 are parallel to each other. In second cases, L1 and L2 are not parallel to each other. They are skew lines. Skew lines are the lines which are not parallel to each other and neither they intersect. Means they are not parallel also and they don't intersect also. Let's go with the case skew lines first. Refer to the diagram given in the slide. If PQ is the shortest distance between lines L1 and L2, let theta be the angle between ST and PQ. Then D, which is PQ, which is the shortest distance, will be equal to ST modulus of cos theta. When we solve this equation by substituting the value of ST at cos theta, we'll get this formula that D is equal to modulus of cross product of vector B1, B2 into dot product with cross product of A1 and A2 divided by modulus of cross product of B1 and B2. And uh, now this equation is in vector form. Let's see the equation in Cartesian form. In Cartesian form, the shortest distance between two lines, line L1 and line L2 will be given by this big formula, which is determinant of matrix divided by the magnitude of this. In second case, where the lines are parallel, then the shortest between shortest distance between two lines will be modulus of vector cross product of vector b with uh, a2 minus a1 divided by modulus of vector b. Let's discuss the new concepts that is concept of plane. What is plane? In mathematics, a plane is a flat two-dimensional surface that extends to infinitely far means it has no ends and it is 2D in nature. Let's discuss the first concept of plane. In the vector form, equation of a plane which is a distance d from the origin and unit vector n normal to the plane to the origin is the equation of vector. Then equation of plane will be dot product of vector r with unit vector n is equal to d. For this concept to understand, imagine a plane which is d distance away from the origin and unit vector, unit vector n which is a unit vector from origin to the plane such that it is perpendicular to the plane then the equation of plane will be dot product of vector r to unit vector n will be equal to c uh, sorry t. Second concept of plane is equation of a plane which is a distance of t from the origin and the direction of cosines of the normal to the plane as l m and n is lx plus my plus nz is equal to t so the equation of plane here will be given by lx plus my plus nz is equal to t where l m and n are direction cosines to the normal plane the equation of a plane through a point whose position vector is vector a and perpendicular to the vector n is given by uh, vector r minus vector a dot product with normal vector n will be zero because they are perpendicular to each other hence the dot product between these two vectors will always be zero because cos 90 is zero equation of a plane perpendicular to a given line with direction ratios a, b, c in passing through a given point x1, y1 and z1 is given by a x1 minus x2 sorry a x minus x1 plus b y minus y1 plus c c minus c1 is equal to 0 where a, b, c are direction ratios which are given by a divided by underscore of a square plus b square plus c square b divided by underscore of b square plus c square plus a square plus c divided by underscore of a square plus b square plus c square which we already discussed in previous slides. Equation of a plane passing through three non-collinear points is given by this. The determinant of is given by this. If we we'll solve this determinant it will be equal to zero. Vector equation of a plane that contains three non-collinear points having position vectors vector a, vector b and vector c is given by vector r minus vector a dot product with b doctor, uh, vector b minus vector a cross product with vector c minus vector a is equal to zero. So uh, in this last concept uh, the vector equation of a plane which contains three collinear points 
points having vector position vectors a b and c in this we can understood this point like this so uh, the plane b and c will be always perpendicular to axis a hence the dot product of r minus a vector with the cross product of b a c a is always zero vector equation of a plane that contains three non collinear points okay this we already discussed equation of a plane that cuts the coordinate axis at a comma 0 comma this this and this it means the equation of a plane which cut the coordinate axis at the axis that plane cuts the axis x at a axis y at b and axis c at c the equation of plane will be given by x upon a plus y upon b plus c upon c equal to 1 vector equation of a plane that passes through the intersection of a plane dot product of vector r with vector n1 is equal to t1 and dot product of r so when two plane intersect with each other they form a line so from this line if a, some other plane goes through or passes then the equation of that third plane which passes through the intersection of two other planes is given by dot product of vector r into n1 plus lambda n lambda n2 is equal to t1 plus lambda d2 here lambda is any non zero constant it's like scalar quantity we have already seen the vector equation now let's see the cartesian equation of plane that passes through the intersection of two given planes the equation of plane one is this and equation of plane two is this if third plane which passes through the intersection of two other planes in cartesian in cartesian form then the equation of the plane will be given as a1 x1 plus b1 y plus c1 z plus t1 plus lambda x2 x plus b2 y plus c2 z plus d2 is equal to 0 two lines are coplanar if they if line a1 plus a vector vector a1 plus lambda b vector b1 another line vector a2 plus mu vector b2 will uh, will get to know that the these two lines are coplanar if difference of vector a2 and a1 and cross product of vector b1 and b2 if we do the dot product in between these two terms if the answer is zero then these two lines will be coplanar same in cartesian form if two lines are coplanar if the determinant of this is zero in vector form if angle between two planes with equation uh, this and uh, with equation r vector with dot product r dot n1 is equal to d1 and r dot n2 is equal to d2 then the angle between these two planes will be given by using their normal vector so cos theta will be equal to dot product of n1 n2 vectors divided by magnitude of n1 into n2 angle between a line and a plane is given by sin theta is equal to dot product of vector b with unit vector direction unit direction vector of plane normal vector with the plane divided by magnitude of vector b into magnitude of normal vector of the plane angle between the planes with equation a1 x plus b1 y plus c1 c plus d1 is equal to 0 and a2 x plus b2 y plus c2 c plus d2 is equal to 0 is given by cos theta modulus of a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 divided by under root of a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square into a into under root of a2 square plus b2 square plus c2 square okay so the last second concept of the plane is distance of a point whose position vector is vector a from the plane r dot n is equal to d is modulus of d minus dot product of vector a with normal vector n 
the distance from a point x1 y1 z1 to the plane ax plus by plus c z plus t is equal to 0 is given by modulus of ax1 plus by1 plus c z1 plus t is equal divide, divided by modulus of a square plus b square plus c square uh, with this last concept we are done with all the concepts with 3d geometry now let's solve some few examples for more clarification solve examples so the first question the ratio in which yz plane divides the line joining 2 comma 4 comma 5 and 3 comma 5 comma 7 is now the question it is given that the plane is yz it means the x coordinate of this plane will be zero so with the help of uh, these two points 2 comma 4 comma 5 and 3 comma 5 comma 7 and the plane which divides them into ratio m comma n where the x coordinate is 0 we can easily solve this question let's see the solution so in this solution we have assumed that the ratio will be in the form of lambda ratio 1 and we know that the x coordinate of yz plane will be 0 hence from the hence from the section formula we can write that 0 is equal to 3 lambda plus 2 divided by lambda plus 1 and from this we can say that lambda is equal to minus 2 by 3 and the ratio is 2 by 3 let's go to the second question second question a line makes angles alpha beta gamma delta with four diagonals of a cube then we need to find the summation of cos square alpha it means we have we need to find cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma plus cos square delta in the question it's given the solid is a cube hence we can see in this diagram that all the dimensions are same like 1 1 1 1 let's assume the direction cosine of that line which do, which is making all which, which is making an angle of alpha beta gamma and delta with four diagonals of q b l m and n Hence, the direction cosine of the first diagonal will be this means a upon under, under root of a plus a square plus b square plus c square like this. And the same formula we'll use for this. So, we'll get 1 upon under root of this and for the direction cosine of second diagonal we can get that the y coordinate is negative because the direction uh, because the y coordinate of that diagonal was negative. Similarly, in third diagonal the z coordinate is negative. And the fourth diagonal x, y, and z coordinate is negative. So, from these four, uh, from these four direction cosines of diagonal, we can see that the cos alpha is equal to this, and cos beta, and cos gamma, and cos delta will be equal to this. So, when we sum these. Like when we sum cos square alpha, cos square beta, cos square gamma, and cos square delta, we get this equation. We already got the value of cos alpha, cos beta, and cos gamma, and cos delta. When we square each value and add them, we'll arrive at this equation. And we already know that this value of l square plus m square plus n square is one. Hence. The summation of cos square alpha plus cos square gamma plus cos square beta plus cos square delta will be equal to 4 by 3. Next question. If a line makes angle 90 degree, 135 degree and 45 degree with x, y and z axis respectively, find its direction cosine. Let's solve this question. So we'll assume the direction cosines of a line will be L, M and N. So we know that the L is cos theta which is 90 degree is equal to 0. M will be cos 135 degree is equal to minus 1 by 2 and cos 45 will be 1 upon 2 2 therefore the direction cosine of the line will be 0 comma minus 1 upon root 2 plus 1 by root 2 find the equation of a line next question find the equation of a line which passes through the point 1 2 3 it is parallel to the vector 3 i cap 2 j cap minus 2 k cap now let's try to solve this question now in the question it is given that the line is passing through the point 1 2 3 therefore the position vector through a through point which is given in the 
क्वेश्चन विल बी आई कैप टू जे कैप प्लस थ्री के कैप एंड इट इज इट इज पैरल टू द वेक्टर थ्री आई कैप टू जे कैप एंड माइनस टू के कैप एंड फ्रॉम द कंसेप्ट ऑफ द प्लेन वी ऑलरेडी नो दैट द लाइन विच पास टू द पॉइंट ए एंड पैरल टू द वैक्टर बी इज गिवन बाय वैक्टर ए प्लस लेमडा वैक्टर बी एंड हेयर लेमडा इज कॉन्स्टेंट हेंस द क्वेश्चन ऑफ अ लाइन विल बी i cap plus 2g cap plus 3k cap plus lambda 3 i cap plus 2g cap minus 2k cap this is the required equation of the line where lambda can be any constant value let's solve the last example find the intercepts cut off by the plane 2x plus y minus z is equal to 5 we know the equation of plane is 2x plus y minus z is equal to 5 when we simplify the equation we'll come to know that uh, the new equation of the plane will be x divided by 5 by 2 y divided by 5 and plus z divided by minus 5 is equal to 1 and it is known from the concept of the plane that the equation of a plane in intercept form is a divided by x divided by a plus y divided by b plus z divided by c is equal to 1 where a b c are the intercepts cut off by the plane x y and c respectively x is respectively so therefore from the given equation we can determine a b and c's value thus the intercept cut off by the plane are 5 by 2 5 and minus 5 at x axis y axis and z axis respectively thank you very much for the lecture I hope you like the video. It can be efficiently used as short notes for the exam preparation. I purposefully made it short so that you can watch it at less time and prepare a short note. All the best for the exam.